let's just crash onwards then. Black Klansman? Indeed. I often think that it must be, well, frankly exhausting to be Spike Lee. <laughs> While he has produced lighter fare like Inside Man in School Days, though lighter is very much a relative term with Lee, so much of his work, from the passionate and provocative Do the Right Thing, through Malcolm X and 25th Hour, to the documentary When the Levees Broke, is so shot through with anger and indignation, generally of the righteous sort of course, that it's nigh on miraculous that he hasn't, well, burst. <laughs> his films obviously form an outlet for this, and it's just as well, since the world in general, and the country of his birth in particular, never seems to slow up in giving him fuel for that fire. That righteousness could come across as preachy, and there is often something of the sermon about his work, though the fact that what he preaches about is so real and valid he usually mitigates that. That and the fact that his films are often damn funny. All of which preamble brings us to Black Klansman, another passionate and timely sermon. John David Washington, son of Lee's longtime collaborator Denzel Washington, plays Ron Stallworth, the first black police officer to join the Colorado Springs Police Department. Ron has his sights set on becoming a detective but is made to endure menial work and casual racism in the records office. After being recruited for an undercover job due to nothing more than his skin colour, he proves successful and capable, so becomes encouraged and pushes an idea for a bold and dangerous new investigation based on nothing less than his ability. And that investigation? Well, as a black police officer, infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> Naturally. After a phone call with a clan recruiter goes unexpectedly well, things start moving quickly and dangerously. Initially seeking only information, Stallworth foolishly uses his real name. While he can pose as a white supremacist over the phone, despite David Duke's claims that he can identify a black man without error just from his speech, there are going to be one or two little giveaways if Ron meets the clan members in person. <laughs> so he ropes in his colleague Flip Zimmerman, played by Scott's favourite CGI creation, Adam Driver, <laughs> to play the in-person half of Ron Stallworth Klansman. Stallworth finds himself in a very difficult place. Caught between love of his job and love of his police-hating activist girlfriend Patrice, Laura Harrier, and surrounded by racists, both those he works with and those who are the targets of his investigation. The stakes are raised even further when Ron finds himself so drawn into the clan's world that he's having telephone conversations with the grand scumbag of the KKK, David Duke, <laughs> played here by Topher Grace. While Flip is expected to demonstrate his loyalty and resolve to the dim-witted but suspicious and highly dangerous local clan members. The idea of a black police officer infiltrating the clan with the help of his Jewish partner is patently absurd, and black clansmen is certainly plenty funny, but the really crazy, funny, absurd thing is that, well, it's real. As the legend of the film's opening tells us, this joint is based on some for real, for real <laughs> Certain things are embellished, of course, and the driver's character and ethnicity are largely constructs, but it's quite a bit more real than most based upon a true story Hollywood fair can claim to be, even including the phone calls between Stallworth and Duke. It will be unfair if John David Washington is continually compared with his famous father, but at this stage in his career it seems reasonable, and while he doesn't have the same range and endurance as Denzel, yet, nor quite the same innate authority or charisma, he gives a really great turn here. It seems that you can indeed inherit acting ability. Adam Driver, to whose existence I believe in, unlike my compatriot <laughs> over there, I like rather a lot when he's not playing Darth Emo, and indeed have done since I first recall seeing him in the Coen Brothers Inside Lewin Davis, and he gives great support to Washington here, both in the comedic and the dramatic sides. From an opening featuring a famous scene from Gone with the Wind, Lee sets out his stall with almost an operatic overture transitioning to Alec Baldwin's mid-century middle-class racist, ranting frothingly at a camera about the dangers of mixing races that, with a tweak of setting and wardrobe, could so painfully be of the now. This is balanced with footage from the despicable birth of a nation, the film credited with revitalising the Ku Klux Klan in the early 20th century, 
and a climax in which Harry Belafonte delivers a harrowing recital of a real-life lynching. Black Klansman is a polemic, certainly, and some portions could do with being trimmed, a far too long sequence featuring a speech by Kwame Ture being a prime candidate, and his sermonising brings some structural issues, with some blunt, static scenes not meshing particularly well with the often more lightweight, and certainly more dynamic, sequences with the investigative team. But it's a deeply entertaining and thought-provoking film, as sadly relevant in today's USA as in the USA in which it is set, something illustrated powerfully by a coda that emotionally blindsided me in the cinema. The world still needs Spike Lee, and his passion, fortunately for us, seems to still burn without consuming, alongside no small amount of skill. Thoroughly recommended. Yes, I was gutted this snuck out of cinemas before I could get to it, so I'm eagerly awaiting this to appear in catch-up formats. But uh, yes, obviously nothing to add, but but it just seems like a good movie. Spike Spike Lee normally can deliver the goods, so I'm uh, gratified to hear that. Yes, uh, I think I'd slightly misunderstood this film at first. I hadn't seen much advertising for it. I think I may have seen a trailer at one point, but I'm not convinced I was paying attention or it was a really misleading trailer because the impression I got from it was that it was, in fact... Ron Stallworth who went undercover in the KKK and, I'm th- and all mm. I could think of was that scene in Oh Brother Where Art Thou when Tommy's um, in the KKK outfit mm. I think they're probably going to notice how did this work <laughs> but no it's not that it's a sort of a combined like a gestalt entity between him and Adam Driver and one playing him on the phone one playing him in person and it's just it's just so rewarding and I mean, there are some horrible, horrible scenes in it, some really deeply unpleasant language used and deeply unpleasant attitudes. But Spike Lee has always been very, very funny as well. And it just, there's just a really nice balance there Mm. of camaraderie, but with a sense of danger at the back, but just punctured often enough with that humour. Yeah. Just to stop it being overwhelming, because some of the things in it could just really be... You just lose all hope because it just the casual way in which some of the people in this talk about other people and as if it's just indisputable fact too, which always depresses me. Yeah. To hear people speak like that. It's crazy. Yeah, Spike Lee is a master filmmaker. And this is not his best film. And as I say it has a few issues, but it's it's so rewarding. I'm really, really glad that I got the chance to see this in the cinema 